department here at Art Storefronts. I've been doing that for years and years and years and years. Hold on, let me just get my Zoom set up here. Bear with me for a second. Appreciate you guys coming out on a Friday. Um, just going to make sure everything is working. Okay, that's working. Okay, that's working too. Um, so 22 days, guys. 22 days till the fourth quarter starts, October 1st, the last three months of the year. And the last three months of the year are essentially the biggest art selling months of the entire year, not even close. And it's been that way for a long time. You know, we've been in business for coming up on like 10 years, but really seven years of it was, was primarily focused on artists and photographers. And we get to see obviously all the sales across our platform and every single solitary year, November in particular, but there's some opportunities in October and December our sales on our customers' websites just go through the roof, more so than any other time all year long. And it doesn't matter if you're a customer or not, okay? You can participate in this. It's the biggest art selling time of the year for a reason. You've got Black Friday, you've got Cyber Monday, you've got the run up to the Christmas holidays. In addition to that, you know, when, when I was a kid, it, you, things used to be civilized, right? You would, you would have Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, everyone would go shopping, there would be deals maybe maybe throughout the weekend and that would be it then they called it black friday then i guess it was always called black friday but then they started making black friday deals out of it right and then they're like let's keep the buying season going and then they did cyber monday and that's how it was for a while black friday cyber monday then certain merchants out there and you know think of all your big ones your amazon your bed bath and beyond uh, your best buy any of them everyone realized that the 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 more forward you move your sale, the better, right? So like if there's a certain amount of dollars in the ecosystem and instead of running your sale on Black Friday, you can run it two weeks ahead of time and have a pre-Black Friday sale. So, excuse me, I bring all that up to say that like somewhere late October, early November, everyone starts jumping on the Black Friday, Cyber Monday train already. And as a result of all of those dollars being spent in the ecosystem, uh, you know, radio, TV, billboards, newspapers, everywhere you look, people are just they have their they have their fingers just a little bit closer to their credit cards and they're a little bit more inclined to uh buy art and it every year the data is just clearer and clearer and clearer like you know we we spend so much of the year getting our customers ready doing marketing all year long getting them ready such that they can take advantage of these sales because it's quite literally the best time of year to 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 be selling art to be selling photography you stand the best chance at making the most money from your art your photography late October, November, and then whatever else you can squeeze out of um, December before Christmas runs. So I like hitting all the topics ahead of time about, about how to get ready for this season and how to put yourself in a position where you can actually succeed and to not wake up one week before Black Friday and go, oh my gosh, I should probably do something. Because what you do now is, is gonna be reflective of the type of revenue potential your art photography business has during that season. And the easiest way to think about it is like, it, 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 and I hate running, okay? So I, I've never run a marathon. I have no intentions of running a marathon. If you run marathons, I respect you, but it's a good analogy here. The marathon is the Black Friday, Cyber Monday period. And if you know that, if you, if you are signed up right now to do a marathon, you're not gonna wait to do all of your practice runs, okay? And, and, until a week before the race, right? Because you're gonna get killed. You're not gonna finish it. So everyone signs up for the race, and starts doing their little practice runs to get ready, right? You know, their three mile run, their two mile run, whatever. And then you start training, you get ready. So all of this, all, all of that is a fitting analogy and fitting what we're going to talk about today. And at a macro, this concept of turning, turning, and by the way, this is sort of like a, a special edition Friday. I've been mixing up the topics on Friday because I just get bored of teaching the same thing all the time and in, in Q4. But t this notion of turning buying questions into selling conversations, okay? We, we have to do some basic setup. So I wanna talk about some basic setup on how to get ready for this. And, and really, this whole, t this whole technique, this whole tactic, this whole mindset is really just how you get the most ROI. ROI is return on investment out of your marketing, out of the work that you're doing to market and build your art of photography business. And I wanna talk about it as, as a general practice a little bit broadly, and then I wanna dive in specifically how we can do this on Instagram and downstream with that, you can also do it on TikTok, although I hate TikTok, I think it's a, I don't even wanna get into it, but you can do it on Instagram or TikTok, and, and, and I wanna show you how to do that tactically step by step. So 
in terms of doing a little setup and we can do and we can do Q&A throughout it too so we have a little bit of a smaller group today because it's summer Friday uh, which means then if you guys have questions you can stop me you can throw them into the chat I'll see those uh, or if you know if you got your camera on only Robert does and don't feel like you have to if, Robert if you have a question though all you have to do is raise your hand and I'll see it okay so <laughs> yeah I got you um, so one, we have to talk broadly, okay, about some setup that you need to do that is going to make you guys more successful when you get these buying questions. And, it, and it's really important. It's, it's sort of like, you know, if I'm asking you to cook a meal, I want you to have all the right utensils, you know, before you go and you start doing it. And so I want to talk about two concepts very broadly. I will, I will send you a link to something you can read after the fact to like really get into depth on it. I just want to hit it at a high level. Number one, now is, it, now is the time between now and in the run-up to Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that you need to sort out your pricing, okay? You need to sort out your pricing. You guys are all, whether you like it or not, businesses, right? You're businesses. And a lot of times artists and photographers think that because they sell art or photography that the normal rules of business do not apply to them. That somehow because some other artist is doing it this way, they can do it that way. And that is utter nonsense. There are rules to business that, that dictate you will make more revenue when you follow them, and it starts with pricing. And so pricing at a very quick high level, and I'm going to send you, you don't have to like take notes on this, I just want you to kind of like, um, not that you would take notes anyway, but like I'm, I'm that super sweet. But I have a, a, a whole crazy guide on this, okay, called Advanced Pricing Strategies for Artists and Photographers that are already selling. I'll put the link in the chat in just a minute that goes in depth about exactly what I'm talking about here, but I just want to talk to you about it now at a high level. and. You need to have prices from zero to $100 in your lineup. You need to have prices from 100 to $1,000 in your lineup. And then you need to have prices over $1,000. And in the guide, I walk you through step-by-step -step how to contemplate your offerings and the various different media types and originals on how to get there. You also need to have non-wall art as a part of your lineup. And I don't even care what the non-wall art is. It doesn't matter to me. It can be anything in, in the merch category from top to bottom. Um, I have some artists that paint wooden spoons that you have in your kitchen and they paint them as decorations. That qualifies. It really doesn't matter what it is as long as it is not wall art. And the reason that you have to do that is that not everybody is ready to buy wall art the minute that they first get introduced to you, the minute uh, that they get, they get drawn into your, your ecosystem or see the post on Instagram or see the post on Facebook or anywhere else. So that's critically important to understand. Step number one. Step number two. Um, you need to open yourself up and say that you take commissions, okay? Now, I don't care if you have zero intention of ever fulfilling the commission. You just have to put a button on your website and you have to let people know that you're available for commissions. Obviously, the easiest way to do this is if you have a website, but you could also put it in your Instagram profile, you could put it anywhere. And the reason is, the reason on the commissions is, a lot of times that you guys will create something and it will be awesome and people will really like the style but it's just not what they have in mind. And what we're attempting to do with this whole teaching today is start buying conversations, right? And when you have commissions and people are aware that you're available for commissions, what they're gonna end up doing is telling you what they're willing to give you money to create. And whether you wanna create it or not is irrelevant because it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you ideas about new niches, new directions, new things that you can potentially work on that there might be a bigger addressable market for than what you're currently selling. Now, I go into all of this like pretty seriously in depth in, 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 in that blog post. So I definitely, definitely recommend reading this thing later. And again, it will walk you through how to do all of this stuff, all of this stuff. It, it, it's like really, really in depth and all the reasons and all the, all the um, you know, uh, uh, how to's, how to get there in your lineup, how to do all the various different things. It's super in depth. So just save that thing. It's in the Zoom chat. You can click on it later and read it later. So when you have those things set up correctly, you're going to do significantly better with when you get buying questions, turning them into sales, to sales conversations, okay? And really, it, this, this technique, this tactic, and I should probably define what the buying questions are. And I know, you know, if any of you guys are creating art and showing it to people, you're getting these questions. You have been getting these questions for years and years and years. And buying questions sort of sound like this. Boy, you are so talented. You should really sell your work. That piece is amazing. I love the colors so much. Wow, you should enter an art fair or a show. You are so talented. I love this piece. It's incredible. I find it so relaxing and calming. 
that that painting you did was amazing. It reminded me of vacations I used to take as a kid. All of those are buying questions, okay? They are, they, they are expressing an interest in your work and asking you to start a conversation with them about selling. What happens normally, okay, is you guys don't do anything. You just say thanks or you give it a little heart, you give it a little thumbs up, or say, oh, thank you so much for the compliment, and you leave it there. Well, why that happens is because no one ever teaches artists and photographers how to actually sell, and that's a problem, right? We all need to learn how to get better at this. Now, I'm gonna go into detail and depth on this in a number of different ways, but practically speaking, I wanna, I wanna touch on what I touched on before, and then we're gonna go, we're gonna deep dive on it. Um, number one, when you get these buying questions, you're never gonna know if they're just flattering you because they're good people or if they're actually interested in your art or if you're, you actually have a product the market will purchase unless you turn these things into selling conversations, okay? So if, if you do not take, have the temerity and have the initiative to, at, to start the selling conversation, you're never gonna know whether or not these people are just nice and flattering you because you're a great person or if you actually have a product the market wants. And let me tell you, there's not an artist or a photographer that doesn't need to know and know again and again and again and again that they have a product that the market wants, okay? So that's number one. Number two, if you don't have the proper range of pricing and you don't have commissions as a part of your lineup, a lot of times what ends up happening is that when you get a buying question and you go to a selling conversation, you're gonna be terrified because the first time that you do it, they're gonna be hit with sticker shock. Oh, your work is so beautiful, it's incredible. Oh, thank you so much for that compliment. By the way, it's for sale. Oh, really? I didn't know that. What is it for sale for? $1,800, $1,800, boom, they just got hit with sticker shock. They're not gonna buy anything. That's crazy, you know, immediately, boom. So when I talk about the range of pricing, when you have zero to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 plus, and, and, and somebody is, is met with that crazy sticker shock reaction, you can immediately respond with, don't worry, that's just that piece. I actually also have stuff uh, under $100, from $100 to 1,000, and then some of my originals are 1,000 over. And, and the reason that I bring that up is because the biggest hurdle that I've seen that my customers, th that I see directly with my customers is, is just having the emotional fortitude to stay the course and do this often because it's terrifying for you guys. You're scared to do it. You're, you're terrified of seeming, you know, being salesy, right? You're like, oh my gosh, no, I'm not gonna do that. And if you don't have the range of pricing and you, take, you start a couple of buying conversations from, from or it's hard, selling conversations from buying questions, you're immediately gonna quit if you get a couple of no's. But when you have the range of pricing, it's very, very easy to take the conversation and steer it to the items that they potentially can afford. And so that's a, that's a very, very important concept. 100% of being successful at this is doing it consistently every single solitary time. In without question, the emotional, uh, the emotional mental hurdle of it is the biggest part. It just is, it just is. And I think, you know, the, the easiest analogy to like explain this is, it's, 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 it just fits so true with, <laughs> with, with the relationship example, right? You know, you remember you were dating, we were all dating at some point in time, perhaps some of you are still dating or maybe this has happened to you, and that person across the room or at the bar, or at school, sporting event, wherever it was, you kind of catch each other's eye for a second. And you're like, huh, something, something, something might have been there. Something might have been there. And maybe you, you go up and talk to them, maybe you don't. If you don't ask for the phone number, okay, so that you can get in touch with that person again, they're gone, and they're never coming back. And that is such like an astute example because I mean, everybody on some level, you know, feels that like, you know, that one person long ago that walked in, walked out and I regretted it or all that kind of nonsense. Um, you have to ask for the phone number. And so all turning the selling questions into buying conversation is, do not let that person walk out of the bar without at least going for the phone number. And I, it, it, maybe it's a bad analogy now that I think about it because that's like such a terrifying thing. It was a terrifying thing for me. I mean. There's so, many, there's so many beautiful gals that I did not walk up to because I was too chicken, right? But we have to get over the emotional hurdle of it. And not talking about the emotional hurdle means that we'll just never get there. We'll never get there. The good news about this is every single solitary artist or photographer I've talked to are getting these questions all the time. So you have all kinds of opportunities to do it. And at its, at its most simple, basic, fundamental, 
when those buying questions come in, all you're looking to do is start a conversation. That's it. Don't let them leave. Start the conversation and it's quite literally that simple. You need to let them know that whatever you have is for sale and you're looking to start a conversation. And if you can just get into that mode where this just becomes second nature, it's just automatic. You get, the, you get the buying question, you turn it into a selling conversation, and you do that every single solitary time, you will be blown away at how your business changes because you never know what's gonna happen. Sometimes uh, they'll be like, okay, I'm interested, and they'll purchase, and you'll be like, oh my gosh, all I had to do was ask, and it happened. Sometimes they'll be like, wow, I really like that, but I'm not in the market for wall art, do you have anything else? Oh, actually I do. Here's all these non wall art products I have under $100. And you'll make that sale. Sometimes they're like, I really, really like your style. And I actually was looking for a commission. I have this specific size above my fireplace. You're just looking to start these conversations. And if you're not capable, and it, it, if you don't at least take a shot at it, you're never going to be in a position. You're never going to be in a position for those conversations to start. The love of your life, that sale is going to walk out the bar and you didn't get the phone number. So that's, that's like a really, really astute way to think about it. And so, so few people do this. So I'm aware of the emotional and mental. you got to buck yourself up. And once you get in the habit of doing it, I mean, most of you guys have, I mean, you think back to the last year, how many, how many different opportunities did you have to turn a buying question into a selling conversation? You had a lot. You had a lot, right? Like anyone that's doing any marketing whatsoever and trying to get their art and photography out there and posting on the socials and potentially doing shows and theirs or, or exhibiting anywhere or, or painting live somewhere, all of them proffer opportunities to practice this, okay? So I know it is a huge mental hurdle. I get it, but it's really, really simple. The next time you get one of these comments on Facebook or get one of these comments on Instagram or somebody walks up to you painting or somebody walks up to you shooting, all you have to let them know is that your work is for sale and where they can find it. That's it, that's it. By the way, that you your work is so incredible, you should sell it. You know, it's funny you say that, I do sell it. Here's the link to my site. Are, are there any pieces in particular you're interested in? And then shut up. And then shut up and let them start talking. That's it. You are so talented, it's amazing. Well, oh, I thank you so much for that compliment, I love it. Just to let you know, everything that I create is for sale. So if you need a piece, I'd love to help you. Is there one you're interested in? All it is is taking that buying question, taking that buying question and trying to start a selling conversation. And most, most artists, photographers, this whole reaction is sheer terror. Most is like, you know, thinking, of, thinking that all of a sudden this is gonna turn them into a used car salesman, okay? It's not going to turn you into a used car salesman. All we need to do is open up the conversation, okay? All we need to do is ask for the phone number before the beautiful gal or guy leaves the bar, right? That's all we have to do. And, and, and when you contemplate it, it's just fundamentally simple to do. And how many opportunities over the last year have you had to do this? If you just start doing this in every single solitary situation where someone gives you a compliment and you let them know it's for sale, you let them know you do commissions, you let them know what your range of pricing is, uh, you let them know how to contact you. If you don't have a website, obviously all this is easier with a website because then you just direct them to the website. But start the conversations, okay? It's that simple. It's that simple. That, that could be the entire lecture right there. And so few of you ever do this. I get compliments all the time. I'm in a juried show. I put out content and I get all kinds of likes, comments, and shares. Everyone tells me my work is great, right? There are no buttons on the ATM machine for, for likes, comments, and shares. For my work, it's all of these compliments. For everyone tells me that I'm awesome. For I've been in a juried show and won an award. And the reason that there are no of those buttons on the ATM machine, because none of those things constitute a sale unless you start the damn selling conversation. You have to start it. You have to realize that you don't want to be a hobbyist. You want to have a growing business every single solitary year. You're going to go out and do some marketing. And if you don't understand this fundamental concept of starting selling conversations from buying questions, you're never going to get there. You're just never going to get there. So it sounds simple. It is simple. And now we can pivot to how awesome it is. Like, what I should say conceptually, though, before I get into the Instagram example. This Instagram example is absolutely fantastic. It's one of, one of the best things that I've seen from technology in a long time. You need to do this everywhere. You need to start doing it everywhere. And you know what? Do you. Do you. You don't have to go for the jugular, okay? I'm a marketing guy. Of course I go to the jugular. That's, that's, that's in my spirit. Someone tells me my work is so amazing. Um, it's incredible. This, you know, you're, you're really talented. You should sell it. I'll be like, 
That's funny you say that. I am selling it. Which piece would you like to buy? I'm looking to clear out some inventory, and I've got to get it out today. And then I shut up, and I wait for the awkward silence to finish. I have zero problem doing that every single solitary time because I'd been in sales earlier in my career and a marketer. You don't have to do it that way, though. You can do it soft and sweet and in your style and in your humor and in your personality. You can just say, thank you so much for that compliment. I really do appreciate that. You know, I, I get that question all the time, and I just wanted to let you know, I do have a shop. Here's the address, and everything is for sale. If you need help with anything, just let me know. Even that works. Even as soft as that works, right? So you can do you in this scenario, and you can, you can not, not betray who you are as a human in personality. You just have to ask. You have to start the conversation. You have to be the one to start the conversation. And once you do, you will, you will be so utterly, totally, and completely blown away because guess what happens? A lot of people say yes. A lot of people just say yes. You know, one of the, one of the things that our websites do that, that, you know, that pretty much all the smartest e-commerce websites do now, and, and, and I'll tell you where I'm going with this example, is you know when we're in the hardware store? The hardware store is the, the analogy I love to give here, right? And we're getting snaked through the aisle on our way up to the checkout counter, up to the cash register. And as we're waiting in the aisle, they're trying to sell us cell phone chargers and fly swatters and little fans and duct tape and drinks and ice creams and, and everything else, right? And that's a concept that's worked in retail for a long, long time. And many of us have purchased those things because one, we're bored, we're looking all out of it. Do I really need that? No, I didn't, but you know, boom, I'm gonna grab it. Then when we get to the hardware store counter and we've, we've, we've rung up everything, we give them our credit card, they run the credit card, they're like, by the way, such and such is on special. Do you wanna add that to your order, right? And what ends up happening is because the hardware store has us snaking through those aisles of, of stuff and because they ask when we're at the cash register, those two things can just be thought of as an ask, and guess what ends up happening? A whole lot of people end up buying, and a whole lot of people end up buying just because someone asked. Now, that concept that I outlined in, 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 the, retail, in the retail context has been moved up to e-commerce, and it, everything in e-commerce is like, people think like the, you know, the, the, the website example is, is reinventing the wheel. It's not. All we're doing is taking what works in a retail context and we're moving it to a digital context, that's it. So the internet, for reasons I don't understand, have come up with the two stupidest names for these things I've ever heard. One click upsells and order bumps, okay? And one happens before your credit card goes in and one happens after your credit card goes in, right? Artists do not have, uh, uh, by default, the ability to ask these questions. They'll never ask these questions on their own. So. We just turned this feature on for all of our customers. We didn't even ask them. We just turned it on and made them put things in. And so it can be a calendar up front and it can be an additional print on back or it can be a tote bag up front or it, it doesn't matter. It can be any combination of anything. There's general rules of thumb about trying to make the items a little bit less than what they purchased. And so if they purchase something for $100, you don't want to have something that's $500 you know, before or after. But what we find universally is just by putting that on for our customers automatically rather than them being forced to do it, people say yes. People say yes. Because the easiest time to get additional dollars, additional revenue out of the people that are coming to your website is when they have their finger on the credit card. It will never be as easy to get an additional sale except when they have their finger on the credit card. So that's the same concept here. All you have to do is ask, okay? All you have to do is ask. So what I wanna show you next is how this works in Instagram. You know now that you need to do this. You know there's an emotional hurdle. You know you need to get your pricing sorted. You know you need to have commissions. And uh, you know you need to do this in every context imaginable, right? You need to do it when, when you're out there painting or you're out there shooting and somebody asks a question. When, when, when somebody asks you what you do, um, when someone sees the work, when you're at a show at a fair, all those situations, you just need to start doing it. Facebook comments, Instagram comments, everywhere. You just need to start doing it. If you challenge yourself, I am gonna do this 30 times, and I am not gonna quit until I've done it 30 times. I will almost guarantee that every single solitary one of you will have some sort of a sales that result as a re you just starting the conversation, okay? Where I love this technique, and by which I mean love, I mean I love it, is a feature that Instagram has stolen verbatim from TikTok, still don't like TikTok, and 
it's essentially a, a, a replying, okay, I've got to get out of there, I've got to get out of there, replying to comments on Instagram Reels, okay, with video. Now, if you guys are not familiar with what Instagram Reels are, essentially any video you make on Instagram now is an Instagram Reel. But, you know, if we look at them, when you're on Instagram, I'm going to mute this so we don't have to hear it. These are all Reels, right? And what's happened recently is that TikTok came out with this product. TikTok started stealing a bunch of users from Instagram. Instagram didn't like that, and so they copied, they copied um, TikTok verbatim. As soon as Instagram got done copying TikTok verbatim, YouTube went, went ahead and copied Instagram verbatim uh, and TikTok, and so now the three of them are just doing these all the time. So, I mean, j j j let's just see if this works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, this is an Instagram reel, right? And you see, you see the text below on top and everything else, okay. This is a TikTok. You're so I'm mute it. Work. Probably will do. Same format, same text, Hope same gets everything. Back. Let's go to YouTube and look at a YouTube short. It always does this when I'm in display mode for some reason. But anyway, if I could show you it, they all look identical. They all look the same. And they're essentially turning into television. And it, they're completely fundamentally changing the game. So you need to be making them if you're unaware of them. Most of you guys are probably already aware of them. What's, what's little known and perhaps n most folks are not as aware of is if you create these, okay, you can respond to comments on the reel with a video. And I'm gonna show this, I'm gonna display this, and then I'm gonna talk about how it is one of the most powerful techniques and tactics you can do to take buying questions and turn them into selling conversations. So I'm gonna get a real, I'm gonna get one of mine that has a bunch of comments. We had one that went viral recently, I think it's this one. Is it this one? I don't know which one it is. It doesn't even matter which one I grab, I just gotta grab one. Where's the one that got all the comments? Oh, anyway, I'm just gonna pick one. Is that it? Can we delete it? I don't know, I can't even tell. Let's see, I can just grab that one and see if there's any comments on this one. So what I also love about this technique, by the way, is that you have to, um, you have to be, making these things in the first place to actually get the comments, right? Okay, so, and again, just so I can show this, so you're on your Instagram profile, you go to the profile, which is the bottom right, and there's a Reels tab. There's your feed, there's your Reels tab, right? The next one over. And so I'm gonna grab this one, I know this one got a ton of comments, and if I hit the comment button, it's gonna let me see all of the comments, right? And everyone, everyone fundamentally understands comments, right? Like, you know, ev everyone gets what these are, and these comments and this feature only shows up on Instagram Reels. So the reason that I love this technique or tactic is because if you guys don't make Reels, you can't do it. What are none of you doing enough of? Making enough Reels, okay? Reels are a big deal right now. So what we can do when someone leaves a comment in a normal context, and let's just say this was on Facebook and it wasn't an Instagram Reel, or let's say it was on the Facebook feed and it wasn't an Instagram Reel, and you get a buying question. This piece is so amazing. It reminds me of that vacation I took in 1986 to such and such, to which you would just go in normally, and let's say this is the, the comment, sage advice, you would just go in normally, and you would just hammer out your, your, your response, right? Like, thank you so much for that comment. Um, I really appreciate it. Just to let you know, uh, it's for sale. Link in the bio, right? Or, or if on Facebook, here's my website address, because you can leave links in Facebook comments. However you get it, via email, anywhere. That's how you would do it. With Instagram Reels though, this is, this is where it just becomes so powerful. So let's say this person left this comment that said sage advice, right? And so you see the blue button to the left of the comment thing? We can just click that. And what it does, it's gonna turn the camera on, you're gonna see me, and then it takes their comment that says sage advice and it embeds it for you right in there. And so instead of sage advice, what this comment would really say for you guys is, your work is so amazing, you should sell it. This piece is incredible. I love the colors in this piece, it's amazing. And all I have to do to turn this into a selling conversation, okay? Thank you so much uh, for, for watching that and, and giving me that compliment that it's sage advice. Just to let you know, uh, if you liked that advice, wait till you see our website product. Wait till you see our marketing education. You should really get a demo and you should contemplate sell, set, uh, signing up because I can help you significantly, okay? I press the stop button. 
I press next. Thank you so much. I uh, press next. I press share. So just like that, in approximately six seconds, not only okay, have I responded to a, a buying question and tried to turn it into a selling conversation, okay, and obviously it's a little bit different for software than it is for, for software and marketing education than it is for art, but I've instantaneously responded to that person. That took me six seconds. I just did it in front of you in real time. That is now going to be saved as a reel on my Instagram platform. It is now going to notify the person in question that it's happened, okay? And now, because it's a reel, there's a whole bunch of other people that are gonna end up seeing it that never would have seen it before, right? So not only did I take a buying question, okay, and turn it into a selling conversation on a one-to-one -one factor, because this person that left this comment is now gonna see this, but now anyone else that happens upon my Instagram reels is gonna understand that everything is for sale. Anyone that sees that reel uh, is a result of it going out, and like, look, I don't care if it goes out to 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, or 10,000 people. I want all of them knowing that my art is for sale. And I've just done that in a period of six seconds, right? That is how fast I did that. That is how powerful this feature is on Instagram. And the results that some of my customers are getting doing this are just absolutely staggering. I'm going to delete that one because that one's just silly. And you can see, like, I, I, I've experimented a ton on it. Um, just, you know, doing, like, Q&A. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do some sort of a prompt, you know, just like this. And, and then I'll just respond to a whole bunch of them. Anyway, bunch of them. Questions number, answer number 10, NG Art, NG7 Fine Art. This is a great question. I love this. Yes, I do know people that are successful. They're the people that are generally successful in all the other areas of their business. So, you know, you have the ability to literally respond to any piece of content that you put on Instagram and have several different people see it. Let people know that you have a sale running. Uh, let people know when your sale is coming. Let people know that that piece is for sale. Let people know that it comes in this media type, this media type, this media type. Let people know that if they like that original, you actually have six or seven other originals that no one's ever seen. Do they want to set up a Zoom call? Send me a DM on Instagram. Do you know how powerful that is? That's insane. That's insane. And no one is doing enough of this. Absolutely no one. And the fact that you can do that, you can have this conversation like this, and then it lives in your Instagram Reels feeds, and people can come in when they first get into your ecosystem, what are they gonna do? They're gonna check out your profile, they're gonna look at some of your posts, what are they posting, and then they're gonna go to your Reels, and they're gonna say, what are your Reels? Then, 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 okay, let's say, and I'm gonna grab one of these other ones down here. Let's say it was a really, really good one, right? Let's say the answer to this one was just really, really good. Catherine, it's a great question. How many sales or too many sales? Okay, so there it was. There it was. I got another buying question that I turned into a selling conversation. After I post it, I just go and hit the little paper airplane. I'm going to add the reel to my story, and now it's in my Instagram story. So I've now taken one buying question. I've started a sale selling conversation that went one-to-one. -one. The person that left the, the comment is now is now in the conversation and it's on Instagram reels, which are being shown everywhere. And it's going to my Instagram stories, which none of you are making enough of anyway. I don't even make enough of them. OK, they're a pain in the butt. I get it. So you look you look at one particular technique, one particular facet about how you can grow your business. That's free. That's this impactful that has this type of an ROI. And I got to be honest with you, I, I, I don't know of many more. And, and, you know, you could potentially, okay, let's just, let me give you like one more piece of trade craft. Let's say fast forward to Black Friday. Black Friday is coming in a week, right? Black Friday is coming in a week. And, and I started all of these selling conversations with all these people. And some of these people bought and some of them didn't, but they were good questions. I can go and with two weeks to go, three weeks to go, scroll down through my Reels feed. And for the whole entire run up to Black Friday, grab them one at a time, put them into my Instagram story. By the way, put in some text in here. By the way, Black Friday sale starts Monday. You know, Black Friday sale runs Friday to Monday, my biggest deal of the year. And I, and I could have enough Instagram story ammo for weeks, for weeks, you guys. And, and especially like, you know, if they're asking about a particular piece, when you go and respond, have the piece in your hand, in the background, instead of, you know, instead of the silly backgrounds that I did or my green screen that you saw a second ago. Do you have any idea how insanely powerful that is? All of you guys struggle, okay, to one, make enough content, period. To, pu content, 
to even do your marketing consistently, period, okay? Almost none of you are consistently marketing. None of you ever have consistently marketed. So the fact that you have the ability to turn buying questions into selling conversations, that you have the ability to respond one-to-one, -one, that you have the ability to respond one-to-one -one and then have it go one-to-many, and then in addition to that, you have the ability to respond, go one-to-one, one-to-many, and feed your Instagram stories, which none of you are doing enough of, and then you can save up all of this ammo, okay, of these 10 or 15 or 20 different buying questions you have and put them on just freaking ta -ta 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 -ta, letting everyone know that you have a sale. Do you have any idea how powerful that is? That is a game changer, okay? That is an absolute game changer, and I see almost no one wrapping their head around that and almost no one doing it, okay? I would be doing it, I, if I were you, I would be doing five, I would be doing as many comments as I got a day, every single solitary day and put them up there. And look, if that's the only content, like let's say your feed looks like this here, which you can see they're all just responses, okay, well then you know you're probably not, n not making enough reels, period. And guess what? You can always delete them after the fact. If you feel like, oh gosh, I'm feeling so salesy, da, 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 then delete them 24 hours later. No one's going to see it anyway. They're busy watching cat videos. So fundamental to growing your art business, okay, from now till Q4 is, is to get the temerity, okay, to, to, to have, have the minerals, as the English like to say, to just ask, just ask. You're just looking to start a conversation, you guys. You're just looking to start a conversation. You're not going to appear salesy. These people do not know that you're artist for sale. Okay, they have no idea. You have to start the conversation. Just try and start the conversation. Watch what happens when you do. I mean, I literally do not want any of you to leave here without committing to me that you're going to do this 30 times. Do this 30 times before you quit. And it doesn't have to be an Instagram Reels. It can be an Instagram Reels. Some of you don't even have an Instagram page. But you will be blown away and how effective this is, and how big of an impact this can change for your business. And man, how does it feel good when one of them hits. When, 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 actually, it's for sale. Are you interested in any of them? Yeah. You know what? Now that you mention it, I am. And you're like, oh my gosh, it happened. And all I did was ask. It's that simple. You got to ask. So when you get the buying questions, start starting the selling conversations. That's what I got. Questions? Comments, concerns. So at the bottom, at the bottom of your Zoom window, there is this little reactions thing, and it's like a little plus sign with the face. And if you click that, there's a way to raise your hand, digitally speaking, uh, and you can ask any question you want. Or if you want to turn your camera on, you can wave. Um, you know, you can you can do any and all of the above um, if you've got questions. Michael's asking me, let's see, how far back um, is it best to cherry pick the comments? As far back as you want. Go, and I, and I love where your head's at, Michael. Get, just spend the rest of Friday going back as far as you can. I actually don't know if there are, I don't know if there's a restriction. You know, the, the, the funny thing about marketing on Instagram in today's day and age, I'm gonna go back to my very first reel and see if there's any questions on them. Is that even a reel? I don't even think that's a reel. There's no comments on that one. I don't know what the answer to that is. You'd have to find out. I mean, they change, they change the rules on Instagram literally like, you know, hour by hour sometimes. So you can never get stressed about it. But what I do know is that like, you know, maybe maybe they cap it at like three months or something. I don't, I don't know if they do or if they don't. They might, they might not. But as long as you do the response and then you save it as a reel, then you're starting to build up that ammo bank for any sale that you have, right? Like I'll be dining out on some of these things for years. Years, just because I've already created them. I've already done the hard work, which is just so powerful about it. Um, but what else guys, questions? Questions about any of the above? Or it can be about anything that we do at Art Store Friends, does not matter to me. I know I kind of hijacked it and went into a, a topic specific session today that's a little bit different than the norm. But if you guys have any questions, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly inclined uh, to answer them. One thing I would say, do you guys know this? Do you not know this? I don't know. So we realize, you know, as we evolve as a company, um, as we grow as a business, that if you guys, it, it, selfishly, okay, cynically, if you like, we only grow as a business, art storefronts, if our customers are successful, okay? If our customers are successful. So the more successful we make our customers, uh, the less hard we have to work on marketing, the faster the business grows. So, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of both in the same boat here. We've realized over the years that every artist and photographer has a marketing problem. That's their biggest problem, period. And 
just getting them to solve the marketing problem is insanely difficult and a lifelong task. Uh, the artist, the photographer, really, if you want them to be successful, they need to create, they need to market, and they need to sell. That's it. Create the stuff, market the stuff, sell the stuff. Any time that is not spent on one of those three buckets is time you are spending on taking you a road to hobby town, okay? To not having a real business, to being a hobbyist. We realize that. And so nobody builds websites with us anymore. That's done for the time being. You sign up with Art Storefronts, we build the website for you. All of it, everything. GoDaddy, URLs, redirects, DNS, building the entire site, putting all your images on it, uh, set, helping you set all your prices. We're doing all of that for you. And the reason is, is becoming a web programmer or HTML or JavaScript or CSS or what the heck is that thing is not a good use of your guy's time. It will never be a good use of your guy's time. You need to create, you need to market and sell. Nowhere in there is become a freaking web programmer, okay? I don't care if you enjoy it or not, it is not the best use of your time. The best use of your time is creating, marketing, and selling. So for anyone that is interested in signing up for Art Storefronts, you do not have to build the website anymore. We are doing that for you, um, which, is, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about that, actually. Um, so Michael's asking me, do you have scouts at ASF that go through artist portfolios to see what artwork photography must be the most? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So there is only one scout. And he, comes, he goes in a couple of different names, uh, Michael. His, his sometimes known as Visa, sometimes known as MasterCard, sometimes American Express, sometimes Discover, sometimes PayPal, sometimes Venmo, sometimes Cash. That is the only uh, uh, scout that exists in the art of photography world. There is no one that can look at your work and say this work is going to sell really well. That is all theory until the art, the photography, is put in front of eyeballs that have never seen it before and see whether or not they'll buy it. If anyone tells you otherwise, they are lying to you. And yes, I understand, okay, I'm gonna show all my work to this person at the gallery, and the gallery, you know, he's been selling art for a long time, he knows what's gonna sell. Yeah, to a certain extent they do, but it's all theory until the work starts selling to strangers. And so most people are never gonna know the answer to that question until they get the damn work in front of, in front of strangers, people not named mom, dad, brother, family, you know, friend, because those people will, of course, buy anything for you. So that's, that's what I would say. That's what I would say. Yeah, it, Larry here's like, I needed web building 18 months ago. Glad that ASF has picked up the ball and helped their artists. Larry's like, damn it all, I signed up 18 months ago and I had to build my own damn site. Larry, I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're learning and we're getting better. We're, we're learning and we're getting better at this. Um, you know, I, I, it, 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 goes as, it goes as far to say too, like the next step in this iteration is, okay, we're building the website for you in addition to teaching you how to market. The next step is gonna be, we're gonna maintain the entire website for you and never even let you touch it. Because again, y you need to create, you need to market, you need to sell. That is how you build an art business, that's it. Any time you're spending on anything else is a huge, tremendous waste of time. So that's sort of how we're evolving as a business. But who else, guys? Questions, comments, concerns on this Friday? And I realize, again, I hijacked the session, so if you've got any questions about art storefronts, about anything that we do, about anything that you're struggling with, I would be more than happy to answer them. Otherwise, we can kick, uh, kick this Friday off in style and get going. Okay, I think Alyssa's, Alyssa's going up. Go ahead, Alyssa. Hey, I'm just wondering um, what kind of packages you have um, and at like art storefronts mm -hmm. and what the pricing is and things like that. Yeah, the best, the best thing to do is, is to get a demo, not because I'm trying to like ram you into a demo, but because I don't have any damn idea with all of them. Um, the, the, what we are essentially is we are, we're, we're like a three-tiered thing. We are number one, yes, website software and everything that that entails. Number two, the most important in my estimation is we're a postgraduate university that teaches art and business marketing. Never stops. And then number three, we have a giant in-house marketing agency now that just does a lot of the work for our customers. So when you sign up, you pay for a monthly website subscription like, like you would anywhere else. You pay a one-time tuition fee to the university and that's it. If you ever decide to use the agency, great, use the agency, but they throw in all kinds of various different well, we'll get your Instagram profile and your Facebook profile tuned up if you don't have those. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll run your first marketing initiatives for you. We'll help you get your pricing set. And so they have a bunch of like, stuff a la carte. So there's, it, it, if you haven't, have you seen a demo or have you not seen a demo? 
No, she went back on mute. Are you there, Alyssa? Um, no, I haven't seen the demo. Okay, I can send you one that's pre-recorded if you're so inclined. If you want to do it that way, rather than right. have to like you know jump jump through the 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 hoops and everything else, let me get one. I want to get one right. Is that what you would prefer? Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay, hold on, I'm refreshing my little tab here, and getting it All right here. Anyone can watch this. This is one Randall run Randall that's Friday, right. and uh, you know this one. This one was like. You know, it's like an hour and like 45 minutes because we literally have that many different bells and whistles and this is and that's and, and everything else. And then, you know, if you're, if you're excited about it, you can, you can go and see the real one. Um, that's what I would say. Yeah. Cool, see, thanks. yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Th yeah. Awesome. Um, and you know, you can, Websites, uh, can they... uh Oh, it's still playing, isn't it? You know, the danger of having like 9 million tabs open, which is me as one of them starts playing audio and you're like, where is it? Where is it? Um, but who else, guys? Comments, questions? Can be anything about anything? I really want you guys to read that, um, that, that pricing article too. That pricing article is like really, really good. And I put it in the chat. You guys can see. So get the zoom out of the way. You know, if you, if you, so if you get the zoom back. So if you look at the bottom of your zoom, there's like a little chat button on here. Boom. If you click that, um, what it'll do is it'll pop out this little zoom window. And so in here is the pricing article. Um, and then down here is the YouTube video. If you want to watch a demo, you can certainly do that. Um, love this, Arlene. So Arlene's asking, now that the shows are done, how am I going to get new customers ideas for seeing more people? Yeah. So Arlene, obviously you live somewhere where the show in Thera Circuit is done likely because of weather, I imagine. Um, we love the shows in Thera's obviously they're, they're fantastic ways to you know, build an art business. They're part of a balanced art marketing diet is, is how I like to say it. Um, but now is when you do the digital marketing, Arlene. Um, and I think you're a customer. Are you a customer? I don't know if you're a customer or not. You might have to leave me a comment on that. But we have, we have like our huge Q4 kickoff workshop starting September 20th, which is like, you know, it's like our big event of the year where we get our customers all fired up and do the rah-rah on getting ready for all the Black Friday, Cyber Monday. But okay. Do you have a great resource master list of all the art festivals across the U.S.? No. Michael, that Google is, is, your, is your solution for that. What I do have, though, um, for those that are interested in doing shows or fairs, I'm so proud of this thing, too. This thing took me so long. Let me just pull it up here. Hold on. So it's called The Ultimate Guide to Successful Art Shows and Fairs, and it walks you through like 100% of the tactical um, about what that looks like, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share that in the chat, too. So that's in there. This thing literally walks you through step by step every single thing to contemplate that you need to do to really absolutely destroy an in-person show or fair, all with real images from my customers, real testimonies uh, from my customers of things that worked, of, of why these things work, of why you need to deploy them. And oh, by the way, you see the non-wall art here? Non-wall art, okay? Do you. She's got stickers, she's got cards, she's got hats, she's got the aforementioned painted wooden spoon, she's got mugs. I don't even know what these other things are. Are they tiny art pieces? Um, Got to have the nine wall art. Yeah, yeah. And look at this. Advanced pricing strategy. Someone on Facebook said it's the best thing I've read on Facebook probably ever. I always love that. I love that comment. But I walk you through how to do everything tactically at a show. Um, this will absolutely blow your mind, this thing, how much, how much data is in there. And, and almost, no one, um, almost no one does all of this. So very, very in-depth article. Um, it's going to take you guys a while to, to read this entire thing. But if you're doing shows and theirs, I highly recommend it. Um, it's, 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 it's a beast. Um, yeah. So it's, it's up there. And all, all of this stuff's on the blog, too. So that's what I've got. Um, oh, see? And I got real-time comments. Thank you, Tamara. That's awesome. And the podcast was just me reading the article. And, you know, that, that, that took a long time. Yeah, and Arlene, you are a customer. So that, you just need to come to that Q4 workshop and in the meantime just keep following the um keep following the the art marketing calendar yeah and as a final that's that's what i would say there is no shortcut in this business you guys you have to learn how to market you have to learn how to market consistently it is a pain in the butt arlene here is like shows and fairs are over now i have to get back to marketing she doesn't want to get back to marketing no one does but guess what it's the only thing that works to grow year over year over year in art business so you can get out of the damn hobby zone and get into a business that's growing year over year in the first couple of years once you start realizing this and you start committing to it they suck they are a pain in the butt you're gonna be pulling your hair out of your head but i once you get through the initial 
hurdles of all these things, how to capture emails, how to email the emails, how to run sales, um, you know, how to run live art shows, how to post content to Instagram and Facebook, it just gets easier. It gets easier. You're like, this is not that difficult. I can totally do this. I can totally build a big business here and it's awesome. But there's no shortcut in the meantime and there are no hacks and there are no tricks and there is no list of high net worth individuals that you're, you're randomly going to plug into. So that's the ball game. Um, but I'm running out of steam, guys. Final questions, comments, concerns? Anything about anything? All good either way? Okay. Well, I think we will leave it there. Everybody have an absolutely fantastic weekend. Uh, enjoy it. And uh, hope to see you either on the inside or in a future session. And uh, we'll, we'll leave it there, guys. Thanks. Have a great weekend.